Welcome to another episode of your favorite libertarian. Today we're going to be talking about the Surefire Scout Light Pro Dual Fuel. In this video we're going to be covering what's in the box, the specs, the features, a little bit of a size comparison between this flashlight and one of my other Surefire lights, why you would want a weapon mounted light in general, why you would want this specific weapon mounted light, and unfortunately some issues with this sample size of one. Let's unbox this. This is actually a real unboxing, unlike uh, some YouTube videos where they put it back in the packaging and they say, all right, I can't wait to open this for the first time. I really, uh, you're welcome by the way, waited for you guys to film this before I took it out and played with it. So this will be the first time I'm unboxing this. In the box, obviously, you're going to get the flashlight itself. You're going to also receive the rechargeable battery. This is an 18650 battery. This is specifically a Surefire 18650 battery. It's micro USB rechargeable. You're also going to get the cord to charge it with. And besides the Picatinny low profile mount that comes with it already installed, you'll also get the M-Lock option as well. And for that M-Lock option, you'll get an Allen key to tighten and loosen these screws. The screws themselves are already pre-Loctited, so that's nice. And you also get quite a bit of literature with your purchase. So besides a brochure of all the other things that you can buy from Surefire, you also get some information about the battery itself, which is uh, pretty extensive for, for just literature for a battery. Get a Surefire sticker. A warning about batteries. Lots of warnings about batteries. And then you get this mammoth instruction manual here for the scout light. I don't even know if I can get all this in frame, but it's got all the specs in there. And then, of course, it's going to show you all the other attachments and heads and things that you can interchange with this and spend more money on. <laughs> For me though, I'm gonna see if I can get by with the way it's configured right now. Uh, but in the future, if you do wanna add any of their switches or other attachments or heads, I believe mod light heads will work on this body as well. You can do that. And then lastly, just gives you a little bit of information about how to use M-Lock accessories, which if you wanna pause the video and look at this, you can. I won't spend too much time on this, but they're very thorough in their literature. I will say that.
One thing to note about this battery is that you have a red indicator that will let you know when it's charging and it'll turn green once it's done charging. You also can't overcharge this battery because of the integral uh, circuit protector that's in the Surefire batteries. So that's really cool. Moving on to the flashlight, let's get into the specs. So everything that I'm talking about in regards to specs, I'm going to say the 18650 spec first, and then I'm going to say the CR123A battery specs, just so I don't have to repeat those two batteries over and over again. So firstly, we got the lumens. Lumen output is going to be 1500 lumens or 1200 lumens. The candela respectively is going to be 16,000 candela or 12,800 candela. You have a throw of 250 meters or 220 meters. The runtime is going to be one and a half hours or one and a quarter hours. The body of the flashlight, or I should say the entire, entire length of the flashlight is, uh, and I'm not making this up, 5.56 inches long. The bezel diameter is going to be the same as pretty much all of the flashlights that are out by Surefire now, which is 1.125 inches in diameter. As far as the weight goes, you're looking at 5.5 ounces with the battery in it, which is the only weight in my opinion that matters. Uh, if there's a flashlight company that's giving the empty weight, I don't know why you're not going to use it without batteries in it. And of course, the options for the dual fuel, that's what the DF stands for, are the 18650 battery or two CR123A batteries. Now, this is not a comparison between this light and any other light, but just to give you a size comparison, this is my Surefire EDC L2T. And this is my everyday carry flashlight. So interestingly enough, uh, bezels are going to be the same, so don't really need to go into to that at all. Uh, but the length is actually going to be shorter than the EDC L2T, which is interesting. The length of this flashlight is 5.75 inches long and the weight of this is going to be a little bit lighter because uh, you don't have the mount and some other things and that's going to be 4.1 ounces with the battery in it so to give you an idea this is a little bit lighter but a little bit longer cap differences are also something to note so with this you have the gas pedal tail cap that means you apply a little bit of pressure it's going to give you a really small amount of lumens. I think it's 10 lumens just for some administrative type tasks. And then if you press it all the way, it's going to just be the face of the sun bright. But there is no constant on unless you switch out this tail cap for something else. So there's no clicky clicky, uh, which I kind of wish it had that. It would be great if you could just press it a little bit and then that would be the 10 lumens and then you press it all the way and it clicks in that would be perfect because then when you're using it in any type of edc emergency situation you don't have to continually press this the whole time to keep it on but that is a big difference between these two tail caps and the runtime for both of these uh, comparatively the runtime on this is going to be an hour with uh, the button pressed all the way and then if you just have the smaller amount of lumens it's going to last for 60 hours which is pretty cool and the only option for lumens is either depending on the battery uh, would be the 1500 lumens or the 1200 lumens and the run times for both of those are either going to be one and a half hours or one and a quarter hours so the run time is better on this than that and this can get brighter than this can but I will say that it's kind of not fair because this only takes the 123A batteries, whereas this will take something that's a little bit higher output battery that will give you a little bit more lumens.
Let's get into the features of this flashlight. So you have an IPX7 waterproof rating, and that's gonna be due to the O-rings that are in this particular flashlight. You also have a tail cap that is a clicky tail cap. So for momentary on, you can press this in actually pretty far without it clicking all the way on, and then press it all the way and it's constant on which is fantastic. I really like the simplicity of the tail caps for Surefire's flashlights. I like Streamlight it a lot, but for a lot of their bigger weapon lights, there's way too many modes. I just want this exact option. I want momentary on and constant on, and I just want one output, which is all of the lumens. So you got the clicky tail cap, and it's shrouded, so you're not accidentally gonna press it. There's a side profile, no rubber is sticking out, so you have to really press on that, and this ring is a nice indexing point for your thumb. This is dual fuel, so it'll take two different kinds of batteries, which is always a plus. The placement of the mount is further back, which is really nice, so you can have this further back on the rail, but then you can stick this out really far if, let's say, you have a suppressor that's covering your your brake or your muzzle device, and you can stick this way further out and get this almost to the end of the rail. Or if you have a front sight, that's going to be able to be installed, but still have this on a pick rail if that's where you're installing it with this Picatinny mount. Mounting options definitely is a feature. Besides having the Picatinny rail option, you also have the M-Lock option, and both of these are reversible. I'll call this a feature as well. This is a dedicated weapon light, meaning that these mounts and the attachment points for this mount and the other mount are integral to the body, meaning it's going to be as low profile as possible. Whereas if you had something like a EDC flashlight and you wanted to get one of those rings and then a, a rail mount that's part of that ring, you might be able to get it pretty close to the rail, but it's not going to be nearly as low profile as this setup. Lastly, this is mil-spec hard anodized aluminum. So it's going to be very durable. And you can see with my EDC L2T, I've carried this for probably pretty close to since it came out. So over a year plus, and the only real markings I have are on the bezel right here. Uh, but other than that, it looks brand new still. Let's talk about why you would need a flashlight and more specifically a weapon mounted flashlight. Here are the bullet points. PID, control, overpowering photonic barriers, seeing far away in the dark, being prepared for when most crime happens, which is at night. And I'll tell you a little bit about why I purchased this particular flashlight for me. So first off, PID. PID is positive identification. So making sure that what you're pointing a gun at is not someone that is your friend or family member. It is a bad guy that is intent on doing you bodily harm or killing you and your loved ones. In a home invasion situation, it's very important not only to have a light, but have one bright enough to determine who that person is, whether you know them or not, if they have any weapons, and if they're the only person that has broken in. Also, this light being as bright as it is, is going to give you, in most cases, control. And that means you'll be able to shine this in their eyes, and you'll be able to control them for a little bit. Maybe not for forever, but if this is shining in someone's eyes, they're going to put their hands up by their face and freeze for a little bit, and that's going to give you the advantage. And you'll also be able to tell during that time with the flood of the light if they have any weapons on them. So bonus there. This particular amount of lumens is probably going to, and this is kind of like an arms race with flashlights, which one's brighter, but uh, it's going to overpower photonic barriers, meaning if there's ambient lighting, 
it's going to overpower that being that spreader. But also, if this is a force on force scenario and you're up against people that also have flashlights on their guns, this might be able to punch through their lighting and overpower their lighting, depending on what type of lighting they have. But this is pretty bright. Uh, it's one of the brightest out there right now. There are some mod lights that are doing uh, pretty insane things. They don't have the runtime that this does, but just food for thought, you'll be able to punch through those photonic barriers, most likely with this light. Seeing far away in the dark. We talked about the throw of this flashlight with the different battery options, and that's important because in some situations you might need to be able to see targets that are very far away. Now, if this is on an AR platform, depending on barrel length and load, all that trajectory stuff, uh, you're, you're going to want to be able to see as far as you will be able to competently shoot and hit targets at and have enough velocity to have that make a difference at those distances. But if you have, let's say, an AR pistol or something that's a shorter barrel, probably up to 300 yards is as far as you're going to want to go with that if you've just got a red dot sight. And this will go out to 250 meters, which is close to 250 yards. And that for me is plenty. I, I don't see myself uh, needing to go further past that. And if I do, it uh, might be time to, to use some other options. And then also, most crime does happen at night. So it's very important that any type of gun that you're using for self-defense, you either have a flashlight on it or you have a flashlight on you that you can use in conjunction with your gun that is handheld. Why did I buy this specific light? Well, a couple reasons, all of the reasons that I just listed, but also I wanted to have a low profile mount and I also wanted to transition to the 18650 batteries. The other Surefire lights and other flashlights that I have all run off of the CR123As, which are great. I don't have any complaints on them. They've got a long shelf life, up to 10 years just sitting there. They do have really good output and they're very dependable and reliable, but I wanted to get to an 18650 battery because I wanted to have more output capability and also more battery life uh, with my flashlights with higher output. And just having both options is great because I might charge this all the way up, take it to a class, and then this dies and I might be in the middle of nowhere and I might not have the ability to plug it into a computer, or some other USB port. And then I can just put in my CR123As that I have on me as a backup, can keep this really bright. It's not going to be as bright, obviously, as the option with rechargeable, but it's going to be nice uh, to have those on hand in the quote unquote field. So that's why I purchased this flashlight. This is an unboxing and initial review, so I'm not really going to talk to longevity or reliability of this light. Uh, I can just tell you based on other Surefire lights that I've had in the past that I'm not expecting this to fail me, but if it does, I will certainly do an update video and let you know. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, it, or at least I've been waiting for, which is putting this on a rail and seeing how it works with the setup that I already have. All right, this is a BCM upper and this is a M-Lock upper, as you can see. It's the uh, BCM MCMR-10. So I'm just gonna take this sling off so I can see what I'm doing and so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I want this. All right, this is a little bit further back than I'd like, but I feel like the bezel, the end of the bezel is a little bit too close to where this flash hider is gonna start doing some, some muzzly things, so. Go ahead and put it in here.
Okay, that feels pretty snug. Now I just need to tighten this front screw here. All right, that's super solid, so I don't need to tighten that anymore. All right, so looks like I'm clearing my QD mount, and I have this pretty close to the muzzle. Um, I have a little bit of room here, but uh, if I did one more Picatinny rail up, then it would be like right here. So uh, I don't know. I don't think I want my flashlight that close to the muzzle. If you get this and you want to put it closer, go for it. <laughs> it's up to you. It's your flashlight, but I'm just going to err on the side of caution with that. So I got my QD mount here. I'm going to see if I can put the sling back on and have this uh, work out. Hopefully it does. Let's see. So it doesn't look like if I want to have this angled this way, it'll work, but I could angle it here and this is not contacting the light at all. So that's good. All right. So I think as far as placement goes, we're good. I need to see how it feels with uh, me holding on to this and pressing my thumb. So let's check that out. If you want an idea of how tight this is to the rail, I think this gives you a pretty good one. This combination of the BCM QD uh, sling mount uh, thingy that's M-Lock and the actual QD sling attachment, man, <laughs> it's getting late. This is getting hard to say. Uh, that combination is actually sticking further out than the bezel of this light to give you an idea of how tight this is. And also, I think I've got it dialed in to exactly where I want it. This push button is in a perfect position, I think. We'll see. Uh, I had to move uh, one other attachment around, but other than that, it was pretty good. The QD swivel thing is lockable in different positions, so I just locked it in a position that was out of the way and wouldn't scratch this, just because I don't want to scratch it up if I don't have to. And... That seems to work really well. I can have this right next to it, which is awesome. This is a little bit further back from the muzzle, so I feel pretty good with that position. I don't think I'd want it any further out, and I wouldn't want it any closer in. Well, I'm still waiting for that battery to charge, so I think I'm going to use the dual fuel technology and put some other batteries in. Got the Surefire 123As. You'll need two of those. One thing you'll want to do before you go to put batteries in is you're going to want to take this tail cap and you're going to want to twist it all the way on. It's very loose when you get it in the box because they actually have that 18650 stored in here to save space and packaging. So you want to make sure that you tighten that. Otherwise, you're going to put batteries in and think it's not working or think you put the batteries in the wrong way. Ask me how I know. So you have to take this head off, unfortunately. I wish that you could take the tail cap off and put the batteries through that way, but I think the reason they have a smaller diameter towards the end of this body is so that the spring in the tail cap switch won't go left or right as pressure is being put down, so that way it's always positively contacting the batteries. That's my guess. So you have to top load them. You're going to want to do tip up or positive side up, like so. And then screw your head, your flashlight back on. And for me, because I have this so tight to the rail, I actually had to loosen the, uh, the screw right here so that I could get that on. So now, unfortunately, what I have to do, if I don't want to take this completely off, is I have to, I'm trying to stay as far away from the muzzle as I can with my hand but I essentially have to get really close to that muzzle to tighten that again, which might be a big deal for you, might not be, but it's something to keep in mind. Now I am able to see how bright it is for the first time. Now, again, this is with one, two, three A's, so it's not gonna be as bright as the rechargeable battery that is still charging at the filming of this segment of the video. All right, so we'll do the momentary on. 
Nice. Click it on. Click it off. Very nice. Now I'm going to turn all the lights off and we'll see how bright it is with the lights off. I don't know how the camera is going to adjust to that, but let's give it a shot. All right, this is with no light. That's with the light on. Again, no light. Light. Pretty freaking bright. There's been a bit of a turn of events in the past day. So what you've seen up to this point in the video has been yesterday's footage. Today's footage is the result of this battery being finally charged. It takes up to five hours to charge this particular battery. And when it is completely charged, there'll be two green lights lit up on the top here. That happened. So what I did in a very excited state, took the head off, put the battery in, put the head back on and clicked it on. That's when I let out a sigh of disappointment. So it's probably hard to tell from the video, but this is supposed to be with the 18650 battery in it, 1500 lumens and 16,000 candela. This is the EDC L2T and I haven't replaced the batteries in a while. This is 1200 lumens. So this is supposed to be not as bright as this, but as you might be able to tell from the video footage you're watching right now, this is very dull. It's basically looking like uh, how it steps down when the battery is super low to kind of let you know that it's really low. That's what it looks like right now. I know what you're thinking. It's probably the battery. There's a, it's a bad battery, right? That's what I thought too, until I did some troubleshooting. So I had my buddy come over with his flashlights and batteries. He's a mod light guy. So he had uh, a mod light battery. Uh, actually, I think it's the keep battery is, is what he uses for his mod lights. And he also had a scout tail cap from one of his other scout flashlights. And he also had the mod light head, obviously. So we wanted to figure out what the issue was. Was it the head? Was it the tail cap? Was it the battery? So we switched out the tail cap first, kept the same battery in, same head in, and clicked the tail cap on, clicked it off. Same result, super, super dim and flickery. Then we tried another tail cap. We actually had a pressure pad Surefire tail cap. We tried that, same result. Then we took the battery itself to rule out that it wasn't a bad battery. We took the battery and put it in his flashlight. And with his flashlight, with his mod light head, uh, with his tail cap, everything worked fantastic. Super, super bright as mod lights are. So we knew it wasn't the battery. Then we swapped out the battery. We kept all the same stuff together, put the battery in from his flashlight, which is a keep battery, and same result. Super dim, super flickery. So the last thing that we did to make sure that it was actually the head uh, that was giving us issues was we took his mod light head off, screwed it on, kept everything the same. So the body I got from Surefire, the tail cap we got from Surefire, and the battery we got from Surefire. Put the mod light head on, everything worked perfectly. So we know beyond a shadow of a doubt unless I'm missing something uh, very important that this head, this dual fuel head is bad, defective, etc. So I emailed Surefire today, which today is Sunday. I emailed them today and explained what happened. I talked about all the troubleshooting that I did and 
am pretty sure at this point that um, it's a bad head. I don't know if it has to do with the dual fuel mechanism that spring in there or any of the internals not being QC'd correctly, but explained that I need a new head sent to me. I don't know if I'll need to send everything back in its original packaging back to Surefire for them to check things out, troubleshoot themselves, warranty stuff out. So as of today, which is the 17th, they have an email, they're open Monday through Friday, so I'm hoping Monday I get a response, but I will keep you guys up to date on what happens with this. Interestingly enough though, the 18650 battery uh, is not working, any 18650 battery is not working with the dual fuel stuff, it's having all sorts of issues, but if I put in the 123As, it's completely fine. And in fact, it's just as bright as if I was using uh, if I was using those batteries in, in this flashlight. So this is completely fine. It's super bright, which is great. But the whole reason I did the dual fuel version is so that I could have dual fuel and have it be even brighter when I use the 18650s. So I will keep you guys up to date on what happens with this, but I took it off the gun because I want to make sure that if they need me to send the whole thing back, I have it all together. I have all the original packaging, etc., that I can send back to them. So stay tuned for the exciting conclusion of the Surefire Scout Light Pro dual fuel. I guess we'll see. If you have experienced any of these same issues or any other ones with this flashlight, let me know in the comment section below. Not only will it be helpful to me, but it'd be helpful to anyone else watching this video if you've experienced issues with the head, with the body, with the tail cap or the battery. I will be having a part two to this video where I talk about my customer service experience. And as a non-disclaimer disclaimer, I bought this with my own money. So I'm not gonna receive any special treatment from the customer service department at Surefire. And I'm interested just to see what that customer service experience will be. So I'll have all that information in my next video on this light. In the meantime, though, I'm going to package it back up and wait until I hear back from customer service. Today is Sunday, the uh, 17th of January, 2021. So maybe Monday. Monday is when they reopen. Hopefully I'll hear from them then. But if not, I'll let you know how long it takes and any other complications or uh, great jobs that they do in dealing with this issue. If you like this video, be sure to like it. That really helps the channel a lot. Also, if you could share this video, get this information out there, because I've seen a lot of super positive reviews, but I haven't seen any where there have been any issues. And for me, I feel like those are uh, more valuable in some cases, because all the troubleshooting I talked about in the video could be helpful if someone else comes across this issue. That's going to do it for me in this flashlight for right now. As always, stay free. God bless.